Yeah, I'm just looking for some food, man. I'm hungry. Like I said, go around to the front desk. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. Bad guys tend to travel in packs. So what do you do when your attention is divided with multiple potential threats? We'll show you right now on First Person Defender. These force-on-force -force scenarios use training guns that fire non-lethal projectiles. My name is Dean and I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. I carry a gun because I'm responsible for my own well-being. When trouble starts, I'm right there and police can be who knows how long before they arrive. Dean's a really nice guy. He's been a fan of the show, First Person Defender, for a long time. He's been watching this for years and he couldn't wait to be on it. I've seen the show and I expect that this is gonna be probably one of the most intense experiences of my life. When it comes to training, I've done a MAG-40 class and some apple seed shoots and have participated in practical shooting exercises at local ranges. What I hope to learn today is what I can improve on, areas I need to do better. Dean appears to take firearms safety and training pretty seriously. He's obviously been to some training classes. He likes to shoot a little bit competitively, but that means he's at least been out there and he knows what pressure is. I think the competitive shooting does help uh, progression for these type scenarios. You, you can't understand what it's like until you've got the adrenaline flowing and, and feel the pressure. Dean's a manager at a large hotel, so for his scenario, we're gonna try to put him in a place that feels like home. We've got Brian Hill here from HK. He's gonna help us with Dean's scenario. Let's bring him in. Brian, what do you got for Dean? So uh, he's gonna be working out back and uh, he's going to be approached and people panhandling for money. Uh, he's in an enclosed environment which really restricts his options. Man, you've got him in a tight spot. He's yep. got nowhere to go. Uh, he has a couple of advantages back there, but we'll see if he can use them. Dean's a good guy who works hard. He's in the loading dock handling his business when he's approached by two nefarious characters. Is he able to navigate difficult obstacles to overcome a bad situation? Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Um, having a smoke break. Taking a smoke break? What are you doing? Right. What are you doing? Uh, I've got to move some sandbags here. Oh, I'll get out, I'll get out of your way. Oh, okay. I'll be in your way. Somebody come by and pick one up. Yep. What can I help you with? Are right, you work here? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, that's cool. What do you do? You move uh, sandbags? I'm the manager here. Oh. You do whatever needs done. Hey, yeah, I was, I was just looking for a job. Just back. Hold, hold on. Hold no, on. man, I was just looking for a job. Hold man. on. Uh, well, you need to go around to the front desk. Y'all pay cash? They uh, give you an application. I heard there. you pay cash over here. No, we sure don't. You have any cash on you? No, sir, I do not. Man, why don't you give me some cash? Just stay How about back. Some stay back. How about some but money? You may have some stay cash. Back. Stay back. Come on. Uh, come on, sir, just a little bit of cash. Just a little, so, whoa, on, whoa, 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 whoa! Back away. I'm just asking for, I'm, I'm needing just food. Why are you to pointing a gun at me? Go around to the front desk. Dude, you are crazy. Him. Why are you pointing a gun at me? Because you're making me very uncomfortable Man, here. I, look, I'm just here. I, I told you, I was looking for a job. You point a gun at me? Yeah, just, I, uh, that's crazy. We just want some money. 911, I'm at the Comfort Inn. Why do you keep pointing a gun at me, Anderson, man? And. I've got two guys that are acting very threatening. Dude. I need some assistance. I, I, back off. Back off. You got to put that don't away. I trouble. Just, just get out of here. Come I on. think, look, why do you Come stop on. pointing a gun at me? You better hope that the police need to get here. You, you've got me cornered, sir. I'm Corner? You can go I'm out. You can leave. Man, I'm just here hanging just, out. What just, you got, uh, man? 
Hey, leave the proper pipe. Got cans or anything? Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking for some food, man. I'm hungry. Like I said, go around to the front desk. I'm on one, I need help now. Man. Uh, are you all right? Mm. Don't, don't, don't even think it. Don't even think it. You need to get off this property. I just am just looking for money. I don't have any. I'm just looking I've for something. I've already told you that. I'm just looking. You need for... to leave the property before the police get here. Index, index, index. Okay, so walk me through the scenario from the beginning to the end. Right now, walk me through the entire thing. Came out to move some sandbags, and there was uh, somebody standing here taking a smoke break. We spoke, I went on about what I had to do, and he left. As I was coming out with another sandbag, I got met here right at the opening. Really didn't have any place to go, and those guys were crowding me, asking if I had any money on me, and I, I felt trapped and threatened. Okay, so then what happened? Uh, I drew my firearm and backed up, got into that doorway to have some sort of cover, and tried to convince them to leave the property. Called 911, said I needed assistance. And then uh, I, I believe the one guy over here pulled a pistol and the shooting began. How do you feel right now? Uh, like I'm about to crawl out of my skin. <laughs> I can, I can tell. Oh yeah, your heart, your heart is, is absolutely pounding. Breathe deep, relax. I'm okay. I'm All okay. right. So let's bring in Brian Hill. When he first approached you, uh, what was your instinct? Well, I wanted distance. I had a sandbag in my hands, and I immediately dropped it and, Which was good. and started backing up. And they followed me into that alcove. You eventually decided to move in between the barriers. Right, because one of them shifted over here and I thought he was gonna come at me from a blind side. Were you able to see both of them clearly from there? Pretty much, that was a, a pretty strong defensive position compared to what el whatever else I had. Did it change the way you were handling a gun? No, no, I can't say that it did. Do you remember pulling it back in from going from side yeah, to side? Going from side yeah. to side, yeah. I had to had to do that. I, I didn't want to take the risk of trying to switch to weekend and fumbling it. I thought you did a great job. You can definitely learn some new tactics today. Brian's going to teach them to you, but you should be pleased with how you performed. The HK VP9 is a full-size modern polymer striker-fired gun. Holds 17 rounds of 9mm, it's optics ready, and of course HK quality. One of the things that you get with a VP9 HK is a polygonal barrel. What does that matter to you? Well, polygonal, different way of doing the grooves inside, the lands and grooves, it's different. Well, it's gonna actually seal behind the bullet better, sealing the gases in, giving you a little bit more velocity. It's also very durable. So lots of time on the range. This baby's gonna last a lifetime of shooting the HK VP9. I thought you did something really well. Uh, your verbal skills were really good. Uh, you were able to manage and to talk and to keep your equilibrium and to stay on an even keel. And uh, you decided to step into this barrier here. This is an unusual position. Yes. You know, we don't see this very often, <laughs> uh, but this is something that can be used to your advantage. If you stand in this doorway and you, instead of getting close to this edge, you lean against the back edge, you can actually see more. Now, just pretend like you have your firearm and just move it from side to side and pretend like you're aiming down there. You see how much motion there is in that? Now lean and against it. Come back. 
see how much difference that is. And now you don't have to move your hands I, I don't at all, have pretty to, much. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm able so to. you're able to see. Yeah. All right. Now we got our bad guys over there that you can see. Okay. So what we're going to have them do is just shift a little bit at a time. I want you to try it close first and watch the visual perspective. So, so step up to where you were. Up. Okay. Yep. All right. Now as he moves from one side to the other, see how much harder it is to track him? It, yeah. Yeah. Now I want you to lean all the way back. All right. Just keep okay. the gun out. Now watch. See how little motion there is? It's just kind of just angle. You just move a little bit. Right. Good. Uh, were you surprised after you shot the one guy and he fell down, the other guy didn't leave? Yeah. Yeah. I, and when he went over and knelt down over him, I thought, he's retrieving the gun. Yeah. And so then I was focused on him and just mm -hmm. the guy that was down was just getting a glance every now and again yeah. to make sure he wasn't up to something. And it's a lot easier with one person to start to manage this. But we want to see the differences in your perspective. So go ahead and crowd up for me at once. Now try to look each side. Don't worry about shooting right now. Now okay. extend the gun Yeah. and see your sights. Extend the gun. Go ahead and extend it. See if you can see it. See, that's a bit of it now. You've naturally moved back. Yep. All right. <laughs> now you can shift your weight. Yep. Okay. There you go. All right, now, can you see him pretty well, and how much do you need to lean out? Well, I, I don't have to lean out much at all. Now Good. I can see all of them. All right, now you, you can see your sights aligned on him. You're managing him, all right? Right. Go ahead and aim and give me a good shot from this position. Good, now, I'm gonna have him scoot over just a little bit to the other side. Now, see how little you can move from this side by shifting your weight, eyes on the target, and can you see him? Yes. Yep. Now get the gun in the eye level. Okay. All right, let's do one more shot. <laughs> Nicely done, all right? Now, did that help you moving back and forth like that? Yes. Okay, let's right. see if he moves a lot more how much you need to move. So let's have you step all the way over here, all right? See how easy it is? Now, he's got a better angle on you. Can you shift in and side a little bit? There oh, you yeah. go. Yeah. There you go. All right, now, let's take a shot from right here, okay? okay. Give me one more shot. All right, good shot. You got to be really careful with the muzzle on the edge of this cement. Right. Make sure it doesn't interfere with it. Good. Right. Our finger off the trigger. Nicely yeah. done. In the real world, weird stuff happens like this, and it's a great advantage if we can practice it a little bit and learn something from it. The HK MP5 is probably one of the most copied carbines in the world. But if you want an HK, you got to get an HK. Now they have the SP5, the sporting version of the MP5. Short, fun, cool, historic, 9mm, fun to shoot. What's not to like? Check out the HK SP5. On first-person Defender, we use training guns that don't fire real bullets. Well, they don't always work, so we get malfunctions. Some of the people on first-person Defender are great at clearing them. Some people, not so much. But malfunctions should be taken seriously. Most of the guns I fire don't have many malfunctions. I said many. Almost every gun will have a malfunction from time to time. This is how I would practice getting out to make a shot. The gun goes click and doesn't go bang. So I've got a timer on my side. When the timer goes off, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna present, the gun's gonna go click because I didn't load around in the chamber, which is also a malfunction. I'm gonna tap the magazine, rack the slide, get back on the target, make the shot, and see how long that takes me to do. I'm gonna do this slowly and smoothly. When the timer goes off, I'm gonna react. Up, out, click, tap, rack. 3.5 seconds. To reset this, just gonna kick that live round out of the chamber, and I'm gonna set it up again. This time, I'm gonna do it as fast as I can because I've been doing this for a long time. But everybody that's new to it, or the idea of it, should just start slow. When the timer goes off, I'm gonna move. Two point six seven took off almost a whole second. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to do it as fast as I can. When the timer goes off, I'll react. Two 
to 0 0.40. I probably reached my limit here. So next time you're out at the range, you can practice malfunction drills simply by the way you set up the gun. Start with it cocked, empty chamber, draw, present, click, no bang, tap, rack, reassess. You can decide to shoot or not shoot. I like to shoot, work on my times. You can have a lot of fun doing it. First Person Defender brought to you by HK. Dean is back to working hard in the loading dock when he's surprised by a persistent panhandler. Does Dean institute his training or does he fail, attempting to escape with his life? Uh, hey, man. Hey. Uh, is this where the office is? A good job. Uh, no, that's around in the front of the building. Oh, okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm just getting out of the rain a little bit. Okay. Well, I need to move some sandbags here. You... Uh, do, you, do, you need, do you need help? You guys uh, hiring? I got it. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. You doing all right today? I'm doing all right. Good. Okay if I stay here? Well, if you wouldn't mind heading back out to the public area of the property, I'd appreciate it. I'd kind of like to stay here. Well, they got a front porch out there. You can go sit out of the rain over there. I'm kind of hungry. You okay. Got, you got any money? I don't. Don't have anything on me. Well, I think I think I'll stay here. Well, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and uh, I'd come kinda, around I'd front. Kinda, I'd kind of mind. I'm I'm comfortable here. Okay. Hey, Joe, uh, call the front desk and have them send security right. around back. We've got somebody back here who refuses right. to leave. All right. Couldn't just let me stay. It wasn't hurting anybody. Yeah. I'm just looking for... A, like I said, just go, I just, go around front. You I'm just looking for a break. Just, nobody gives a guy a break. I, I don't have anything on me, sir. Just, just go on around front, okay? All right. I just hang out, just hang out here. Okay. Yeah, he's still here and he refuses to leave. Uh, go ahead and call the police, ask them to step out. What do you need to call the police for? Well, I've asked you numerous times to leave this part of the property. Have I refuse. hurt you? Pardon me? Have I done anything to you? Uh, this place is off limits. This is the- Says who? Uh, the sign's posted. I don't see any Employees sign. Employees only. I don't so see- just please step around to the front of the building. Why don't you just do your job and worry about yourself? Well, that, this is part of my job. Just uh, kind of wondering what's in here. You guys throwing this away? Uh, no, sure no. not. Please exit the property, sir. I know you got a little bit of money. My billfold is in my office. I don't have it on me. You got something with you. I, I've got a, a radio here for the front desk. Can I take a look at that? Yeah, just keep your distance. Hey. Stay, stay back. Hey. Stay back. Stay back. I'm just looking. I'm just looking for some I, help. I've asked you repeatedly to leave the property. I'm just looking. Can I just go Come through on. this? I need you to get off the can property, I just, sir. Can I just go move, through this? Move, move on. You're not going to shoot me. Move on. You're not going to shoot me. I hope I don't have to. Uh, you won't. You're not going to. Move on. Okay, just stay down till help gets here. Police are coming. Dean, I'm security. What happened? <laughs> hey, I heard the shots. Call and get us an ambulance. Index, index, index.
Man, you're obviously worked up. Yeah. I had uh, numerous misfires there. Yeah. It, it just time after time after time, and he was coming at me with a knife. All right, so tell me what happened. Walk me through it. Uh, well, I came out, and there were two guys out here. I came in here, and this guy's in here taking a smoke break, and it took a second to register that I didn't know if he belonged there or not. I got too close and uh, then tried to get him to come out and leave, and that just that wasn't happening. Well, let's bring in Brian Hill and see what he has to say. Did you feel like you, you had the reason and right to be here and he really, really needed to leave? Yes, and I had a purpose. I had a task that needed completed, and I got fixated on that. I've got to get these sandbags moved. How'd the malfunction affect you? Uh, I, that almost, you almost set into panic mode when that happens, and you, you've got to clear. One of the biggest problems that people have is they want to carry a gun, they want to carry one that's easy to shoot. Well, the easiest ones to shoot is a semi-auto. But when a semi-auto doesn't work, not everybody knows how to get it to work again. And you kept fighting. I, I love malfunction drills. I'm <laughs> one of the few. <laughs> but I've, I've never had one that it was multiple rounds. So let me ask you a question, Brian. How do you feel about when he shot the guy with the knife? He said, you're not gonna shoot me. And then the knife came out and he took maybe one and a half more steps and he put two in his chest. I think it's the right decision. That knife's incredibly dangerous in a closed space like that. So I talked to the bad guy, fellas. Bad guy says the first two rounds were just low, just below the diaphragm. Right. All right, so we gotta make sure we're trying for high center chest hits. Your last three were high center chest and he went down and he still wouldn't stop wriggling on the ground. Right. Drugs are a crazy thing. Yep. Well, Brian, I am impressed. You? Yeah, I am too. Uh, between the verbal skills and the movement and the way he took instruction, I thought he did a great job today. Add the malfunction clearance to it and keeping his cool. Yeah. You just never know with force on force. It always goes in weird areas, and that's part of the usefulness of this training. You know, one of the things I don't say on camera a lot is I tell these guys, I said, do what you would normally do, act how you would normally act, and you will be twice as successful. It's the people on high alert that just get flustered and melt down. Yeah. Too much excitement gets you in trouble is too little excitement with this. So I thought he did a really natural job, and I was really pleasantly surprised with the outcome. As was I. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching First Person Defender. Did you know there are more ways to follow what Gun Talk's doing? Like GunTalk.com, GunDealio.com, the Gun Talk Podcasts, and the Gun Talk email newsletter. Follow us, interact with us. Thanks for watching.